working with uh, working with a lot of inventors across the board in different industries, we see people coming in at different stages. Sometimes it's just a rough idea or maybe a prototype. What do you what would you say is the best place to start when it comes to trying to pursue a patent? Well, one of the first things I talk to inventors about when they call me in the office is whether they actually have met the legal definition of inventorship. So in the legal definition of an invention is conception plus reduction to practice. So conception would be I have an idea. It would be great if I could figure out a way to beam myself to the moon. Reduction to practice is figuring out how to do that and you can reduce an idea to practice in one of two ways, either by going to a firm like Salient and uh, developing a virtual prototype, which as you know, we do in a lot of our cases. We design those in SolidWorks and make a virtual prototype that all the pieces are there virtually, but it's not a tangible prototype yet. Exactly, and that works for us because I can, in my office, access the e-drawings file and rotate and hide parts and take things apart and explode views. And so we've done that, as you know, a number of times before. So we work with virtual prototypes or physical prototypes. A lot of times, if these are very, very big inventions, we'll go out in the field and film it while the inventor's explaining how it works. Or if they're smaller inventions, they can send them to our office where um, I can physically take them apart and figure out how they work. So you're saying you can't necessarily patent a, just a, an idea, a basic idea or a problem. It has to be a, a, a functioning, working mechanism before you can really pursue a patent. Exactly. You have to do more than identify the problem. You have to come up with a solution. And you have to be able to teach that solution in the patent application so that uh, someone skilled in the art could read the patent application and make that invention.